In this video, I want to talk about some of the unusual things that have been happening on Amazon KDP recently. What's going on with Amazon? If you haven't been on my channel before, my name is Nuria Corby from thehomeboss.com. Welcome to my channel, which is all about helping you to make money online. And uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the strange things that are going on in Amazon KDP. One of the things being talked about a lot this week is account terminations. But let's have a look at all the other things that I've noticed as well. So I thought I let you know some of the things that Amazon say you're not supposed to do, but you can still see them on Amazon, but it's something that we should avoid doing. Here's a list of things that you shouldn't do, but we see them happening on Amazon all the time. Number one is don't use keywords in your author name. So Amazon don't like it if you have keywords in your author name. Some people are calling themselves pretty coloring books or gratitude journals. <laughs> and that is really the title or the subtitle of a book rather than an author name. Amazon prefer it if your author names are like people's names, you know, John Smith, Mary Miller. <laughs> As you can see, Amazon is still full of those kind of names and uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do about it, but um, I know that they're trying to get people to use proper names rather than brand names or keywords. The other thing that Amazon don't like is to have repetitive words in your titles and subtitles. So if you repeat a word in your title or in your subtitle, sometimes your book can be rejected for that reason. If you look on Amazon, you can see lots of titles with repetitive words and the same kind of words again in the subtitle. It's another one of those situations where don't do what you see on Amazon follow Amazon's guidelines because those books might have been there for a long time. Sometimes I see newly published books like that, but they have just slipped through the system and you really want to avoid any future problems. So try and avoid that. The other thing that I see quite a lot is books in the wrong categories. And this is a tricky one because sometimes Amazon puts them in the wrong categories. When we choose our two categories, when we upload our book, those are the BISAC categories, they're industry standard categories, and they are not the categories that the buyer sees. The categories the buyer sees are chosen by Amazon based on the two categories that we choose when we upload our book and also based on the keywords that we have. So Amazon sometimes places books in the wrong categories and we can't really do anything about it and it's not our fault. But I think what has happened is that a lot of people have placed their books deliberately in the wrong categories to get a higher ranking, to get the bestseller badge in a certain category. And I know that a lot of YouTube videos advise people to, to place your books into more categories. To be honest, I've never noticed that it makes any big difference. I don't really do that and I manage to sell enough books without doing that. I'm happy with the categories that Amazon chooses for me. So I think it's best to avoid any problems and not to ask Amazon to put your books in other categories. I know that you can ask Amazon to put your books into eight additional categories. I do have a video about that as well that you can check out. And um, it's something that people used to do a lot. I don't know whether it's a good idea or not. And I think it can cause more problems really. So for me, it's something that I wouldn't do and definitely don't place them in categories that are irrelevant to your books because that's what people were doing. They were placing their books in irrelevant categories and that's when Amazon decided to cut down on that. And I think a lot of people were mixed up in this that maybe didn't put their books in the wrong categories, but they got caught up in the whole thing. So sometimes I look through Amazon and I look at books and when I see the categories they're placed under, I think, ha, huh, this is completely wrong. And I don't know if they've deliberately done that or if Amazon have put them there, but try to avoid that because it can cause problems. The other big thing that I see quite a lot is books with copyrighted material or trademarked material. And we see that a lot. We see a lot of Disney books, Marvel books, 
things that are copyrighted and trademarked the thing is we don't know whether they might have bought license from disney because you can buy licenses to to produce books and other items as well but i think in most cases these people haven't really bought a license especially if they're independently published my guess is that they're infringing on copyright and trademark and you have to be really really careful that you don't use any copyrighted material or trademarked material and i have a video about that as well so check this out because it's really important that you don't infringe on copyrights and trademarks because this is a really sure way of losing your account and that's not even the worst thing the worst thing is that the trademark holder can sue you and if it's somebody like disney they go after people so just make sure you stay safe and you don't use any copyrighted or trademarked material so it does annoy me when i see all these things on amazon the keyword stuffed titles the books in the wrong category the keywords in their pen names but you know don't worry about what other people are doing just concentrate on what you're doing those things might be genuine mistakes maybe they were people who have just started publishing and they don't know the rules and this is why it's so important if you're just starting out on amazon kdp please make sure you read their rules and their conditions and make sure that you follow them because you don't want to get your account terminated your kdp account is precious and you really need to make sure that you stay safe the other thing that people are talking about recently a lot is account terminations it seems that people have been receiving an email telling them that their account has been terminated for infringing or for things they did wrong on certain book titles or certain books that they have published but when they look at those books, they realize they haven't even published those kind of books. So it looks like there is, at first glance, it looks like they have made a mistake because people are reading this email and thinking, well, I haven't published these books. This, this is not one of my books. And what can they do? I've been following this very closely in different Facebook groups and generally as well and from people emailing me. And uh, I think that there is a little bit of a mystery around this because my personal feeling is that a lot of these emails are scam emails. Sometimes they do not come from the normal Amazon account that they should be sent from. They come from an account that is associated with spam and with scam emails sometimes. So it's really important that whatever happens, do not click on any links in the emails that you receive. If you receive an email from Amazon, don't click on anything. Just go to your KDP account, log into your account. And if everything is well with your account, then that's a scam email and you don't have to worry about it. But if you log into your KDP account and there is a problem, then you need to deal with that as soon as possible. And then you need to reply to Amazon and ask them for clarification because if the books that they mention are not your books then it could be that it's a mistake or there might be something else this is the problem sometimes some accounts are flagged up from something that they've done in the past and then any other minor uh, infringement or any minor mistake will then cause your account to be terminated because you've already had a warning before if you've never had a warning before if your account is in good standing and it's been terminated and you can't quite find out why that is then definitely contact amazon because amazon can make mistakes amazon is such a big company and a lot of their processes are automated and processed by bots so mistakes can and do happen unfortunately so it's important that you contact them as soon as possible after you've received an email that is not that clear and uh, i do know of some cases where there have been mistakes but in the majority of cases I think that they had reason to terminate the accounts. There's usually something that hasn't happened. Sometimes they have sent warnings and people haven't replied to those warnings. So this is why it's important that if you do receive any communication from Amazon warning you about something, that you contact them. And the first thing to do is never to click on an email. Just go straight into your KDP account and find out what's going on from there. If there's nothing wrong in your account, then it's probably all fine. But if you have received an email and your KDP account is 
um, terminated or suspended then you do need to contact them if you think you haven't done anything wrong. So what are the things that we can do to stay safe? So first of all follow the KDP rules to the letter, familiarize yourself with their rules and with their uh, conditions. I will leave a link to their page underneath this video so you can read it and you should really before you publish anything you should make absolutely sure that you understand what they require from you, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do and I have many videos on those kind of things. I have videos on how to avoid copyright issues, you know, what the rules are, what not to do on Amazon KDP. So you can look all of that up, do your research. It's really important that you that you protect your Amazon account. Your Amazon account is valuable. It's really precious and it's a source of income that is relatively easy compared to, to other income. So you want to make sure that you, that you do all the right things. The other thing you can do to stay safe, as I said before, never click on any emails without checking exactly where they're coming from. Are they from a legitimate Amazon account? and always log into your KDP account first and also ensure that you've got two-factor authentication enabled. I know that sometimes that can be a bit of a pain because I've got it enabled and whenever I want to log into Amazon it asks me for a code that they've sent to my phone and it can be annoying but it's a really good way of protecting your account and I think these days it's absolutely necessary to do that so try and stay as safe as possible online as you can. There is also a KDP chat. I didn't even realize that that was enabled now but I don't know whether that works in each marketplace in each country. I recently discovered that it does work here in the UK and I think it definitely works in the US. So if you want to talk to Amazon, their chat feature is actually a really good way to do that. And I think the way to access it is if you go onto the help button and then you say that you want to get in touch with Amazon, they will ask you some questions, what your question is relating to, and then you click on them and eventually you get to, to the chat feature. So that is another way of talking to them. I think that is a real person talking to you on the chat feature and not some chat bot. But um, you know, there's only one way to find out, try it out. If you have reason to, to contact Amazon, that would be an alternative way to do so. I think also what has happened is that there are so many new people doing Amazon KDP and uh, a lot of them are rushing into it without reading all the guidelines, without knowing what the rules are and a lot of people are unfortunately making many mistakes and then what's happening is that KDP is just terminating all of those accounts and then we hear about that in the Facebook groups and online and it, it makes it seem as if there are a lot of account terminations happening for no good reason. But I do believe that in most cases there is a reason. Amazon make mistakes, yes that can happen, but the majority are probably because there is something wrong with that account or they have done something wrong. But even if you have, you know, you can contact Amazon and find out exactly what that is because you want to avoid repeating the same mistake twice. So just make sure that you follow all the rules. And I believe that if you do that, most of the time you won't have any problems. Like I said, they can make mistakes, that's true, but they are rare. So don't be afraid, don't panic now and think that you're going to get your account shut down. Fingers crossed that's not going to happen, but you just never know. And that is why I always talk about having different streams of income. You know, you shouldn't just rely on Amazon KDP as one type of income. For example, I've got several streams of income. I've got print-on-demand shops on Etsy. I've got um, printables stores on Etsy. I've got my YouTube channel. I've got, what else have I got? My blogs. I've got my website. So there are a lot of things that I've got aside from KDP and it's important to build that up and to have more streams of income so that you don't just rely on one. And the good thing about making low content books is that we have learned a lot of skills that can be applied to other types of businesses. You know, 
these skills are transferable. So for example, you can make printables and sell them on Etsy. And that is another income stream that you can run alongside your Amazon KDP business. My advice to you is to start with one and to really make sure that you get it going. So if you started KDP, make sure that KDP starts working for you before you start another income. Unless KDP isn't for you and you decide that you don't want to continue and then you want to start something new, then that's fine. But if you are working on KDP, you're enjoying it, then let that grow a little bit before you start something else. And uh, once that's going for you and you want to try something, printables is the next best thing that I can recommend because it's very similar to creating low content books. A lot of the interiors that we create for low content books can then be used for printables. And I've actually got a printables mini course on my website at the moment. So if you are interested in creating printables, it's a very short course. It's a few lessons and it just shows you how to get started, what kind of printables you can create, how to create them. And it's got a list of ideas and it's quite a good course for people who want to start creating something different. And I'm in the process of creating a big course on printables and that will be different because that will be about how to create a printables business and that will go into much more detail. It will go into how to set up your Etsy shops, it will go into um, advertising afterwards, how you can promote your printables and it's all about how to scale that business so that it can become another part-time income or even a full-time income as it has for many people. So that is another kind of income stream that you can create with the same skills that you have learned from creating low content books and I will leave a link to the printables mini course under this video and uh, the big course will probably come out at the end of November something like that hopefully if I can <laughs> if I can put in the hours to to create that in time before Christmas so this is what has been happening this week there has been a lot of panic and a lot of worry about suspending accounts but all I can say to you is there's not much that we can do other than to do the right thing and to stay safe and to to create books in the way that Amazon wants us to create them. Research your niche, research what you have to do on Amazon and follow the rules. And that way you will avoid, fingers crossed, many problems. Like I said, mistakes can happen, but they are rare. So let's just hope that we can take a positive from this and just let it reinforce that we're doing all the things in the right way let's do this correctly stay safe and uh, i hope this video has helped you a little bit don't worry too much if you are still worried pop onto my facebook group and let's talk about this but i think that if you're doing things the right way there's very little chance that you'll get caught up in any account terminations so thank you again for watching today and i'll see you again very soon bye bye